In today's show, a club of champions calls on one of its best. And two young players wait for their turn in the big league. Hi, I'm Mark Bickley and welcome to The Crows Show. Brought to you by the new Pork Belly Deluxe Burger only at Hungry Jack's. We're coming to you from Ghana country as the AFL celebrates Sir Doug Nichols round. Recognising the wonderful contribution Indigenous players make to our great game. Also joining us today, Belinda Sloan. Bix, experiencing the full range of emotions is part of the journey for every Crows fan. But spare a thought for the players' families because for them, it's personal. Shortly, we'll get to know some of them. Thanks, Belinda. Now, when Crows favourite Graham Johncock retired, he returned to his football home, the Mallee Park Club in Port Lincoln, where he continued to play and coach. The club has produced many Indigenous AFL champions, but in recent years, it has faced a few challenges. Graham has now taken charge, and he's having an immediate impact. He's got plenty of power. He was the sub. He's kicked the goal. And later in front. And later in front. Two, three years out from me retiring, I always always wanted to return home. You know, this is where it all started and this is where I wanted to finish it. I didn't hesitate at all once I retired from playing with the Crows that I wanted to come home and um, that's what I did. Mallee Park started, was established in um, you know, 1981. My father was a part of the first team that ran out and played. You know, we grew up here playing as juniors and being involved. My grandparents and, and uh, parents were involved through the coaching and not only on field but off, through, off field through the canteen and the management of the place and all that sort of stuff. I was involved with footy already at Mallee Park through coaching and other leadership roles on game day and stuff like that. So the opportunity arose. Um, the previous president before me was my old man and um, unfortunately he got a bit crook. We had an AGM come around and he had to step down and unfortunately everybody you know, voted me in. So I'm stuck with it now until I find somebody else to do it. It's been fantastic for myself, my self-development and that sort of stuff in a leadership role and really embracing it and um, I'm putting a really big emphasis on, uh, on our juniors um, and supporting them because they are the future of our club. The challenges that Mallee Park faces is, is, is uh, nothing new. A team in a small town and all the teams are all fighting, I guess, for the, for the same sort of sponsorship around town. Engaging our youth has, has been a big one. A couple of years ago when COVID first hit, a lot of leagues actually, you know, had the year off. Portland and Footy League didn't, but Mallee Park, uh, I guess, bit the bullet and, and said, no, nah, we won't be participating this year. I guess last year in itself, or the year before, was, was more about trying to get our kids back re-engaged into football. You know, having a women's team, I guess, in the competition here, it brought a, a real enthusiasm around the club, not only the club, but the community. You know, we, we've never had our club open on a, in February, and with the women's competition, it brought that, sort of, I guess, sense of camaraderie with the community again. It sort of brought us back together, and it's a real community effort um, to keep a club going, and um, not just the John Cock family, but um, you know, the community as a whole, is, you know, other families in the community have definitely made Mallee Park what it is today. I couldn't think of a better person to turn the club around. Now, one Indigenous player who's been impressing in the sandful is Tariq Newchurch. He and other youngsters like Patrick Parnell undergo rigorous strength and conditioning programs before they're ready to play at the highest level. Newchurch out the back. He's going to walk in goal and kick six for Adelaide in the second term. And now running through the middle, Parnell just to see he's parted for him. Kicks to the hot spot. Maybe it'll be left for him. It is. What a great goal! I've grown a little bit, it's obviously pretty special to be drafted as a, a childhood dream. Um, it's been a quick 12 months, um, but I feel like I've settled in pretty well, uh, made some good mates and I feel like my footy's come a pretty long way, so hopefully I can keep playing some consistent footy in the sample and, and maybe get a look into the senior side later in the year. Dangerous road joins in, New Church. Oh, show some a clean pair of heels with the outside of the right boot, Tariq Newchurch. So I've been told that I just need to work on my consistency, um, just playing consistent football. And pressure was one as well, but I kind of improved on that. Playing with Ryder, you learn a lot. Um, obviously played a fair while in the AFL. So he plays and coaches as well, so I go with him every, after every game and 
see what I can work on, see what I've done wrong. I know knows his staff of like Marco as well. Obviously played a fair bit of footy at Centrals and was at Hawthorne as well. So I feel like he he knows his stuff as well and I've been able to learn a bit from him. Adelaide went to ground, some pressure good there from Parnell. I think just adapting to the speed, playing um, senior footy week in, week out, trying to get my body up. Um, but I feel like I've started to sort of adapt. Still a little bit of a way to go, but I feel like um, I've been able to add maybe about seven kilos since I got here. Um, and I'm able to hold my own um, at uh, Sanford footy, so yeah. What I've enjoyed the most about being at the club is just being around the boys and building that connection with um, other teammates and um, yeah, just being around the boys, I guess. You can certainly see the strong development of some of those youngsters. Stay with us after the break for Linda Sloan with some more than usual anxious fans. Victory or disappointment of defeat? Crows families know these feelings all too well and share their emotions every week. Let's get to know some of them. Glad, will he go for home from there? Lines him up and splits the middle. Two in a row, Crows. Now, one of the OGs, Rory Laird's mum, Mel. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So, Rory is one of the most senior players now. You've been doing this, this isn't your first rodeo, you've been coming to these games for years now. How many seasons is he? This is his 11. <laughs> and have you noticed a lot of change in how you are in the crowd? You relaxed? Yeah, much more relaxed now. Now, I'm, now I know he's sort of, you know, got to get touches and things. Whereas when, he, when they first start, you get very nervous because, you know, you're not used to them playing and everything. So, yeah, no, much more relaxed now. Saligo is a tough tackler. Tackle way there. He's a tackling machine, isn't he, Saligo? Here with Jake Saligo's wonderful parents, Cheryl and Andrew. Good evening. Good evening. How are you going? So game number three tonight for your boy, I understand. Yes, very exciting. So yeah, we're really excited to be here. And you must be really proud seeing him run out at Adelaide Oval. Yes, absolutely. It's a bit surreal still to see him, see him do that, but we, uh, we just love it. Is it nerve-wracking watching him out there? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you, you sort of hope, like any parent, you don't want your, your boy to get hurt. I think they get used to how they play and they, and they get used to the tackling and so on, but you're always nervous. Oh, Brody Smith has left. I'm with Izzy, beautiful partner of Brody Smith. Thanks for joining us. Now, I have to touch on the other week when Brody yeah. got concussed. What's it like sitting in the stands for you when you see something like that? It was absolutely sickening. I got up straight away, pretty much ran straight down to him, and I was in... To be honest, I was a mess. It was horrible. But thankfully, he was fine. He's pulled up. Absolutely brilliant. It was like ne nothing ever happened. So, yeah, pretty lucky. I'm interested to know, do you have any part in Rory's game prep? So do you do any dinners or anything like that night before a game? Not the night before. No, he's so fastidious in what he does. I'm not allowed to go anywhere near any of that. OK. Oh, no, he's... No. I mean, it's not like he lived with you his whole childhood. Yeah, like, exactly. Why would he have you near him? Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and how have you found the introduction to the AFL world and to, to I suppose, the Adelaide Crows family? Yeah, certainly. Look, it, it's when you're on the outside, you sort of think it's, it's up there untouchable. The club has been so accommodating and, and the players will come up and say hello, the CEO. It's like a local footy club and it wasn't what we expected and we're really, really happy about how it's um, the outcome and how they treat the parents. Well, thank you so much for your time and fingers crossed for a win and fingers crossed Jake has a wonderful game. Yeah! Thanks, Belinda. Every relative, no matter what level of competition, can certainly identify with those feelings. This time last year, Jake Saligo could only imagine an AFL career, but he vividly remembers one game, and it produced his whopper moment. Thanks to Hungry Jacks, Tom Duday gets Jake to refresh his memory. All right, time for another Crows whopper moment. This one is going to be a ripper, I can tell. Jake Saligo, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. How you going, mate? You nervous? Are you excited? Nah, I'm excited to be on. It's good having a chat to you. Let's get into it. Your Crows Whopper moment, talk me through it. I'm, uh, I've got a bit of an inkling, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, well, uh, my Crows Whopper moment is, I remember watching it live, is 
Filthy's kick over his head against um, St Kilda round 13 last year. One at Ryder, important ricochets back. Phil Thorpe over his head, hoping for some magic. He's produced it. The Crows have produced a miracle. Now can they hang on? And I just remember watching. I was just like pretty crazy, and the celebration after was pretty good. I remember that game. We we go down. Six goals to start the first quarter, eventually come back and then out of nowhere just kicks it over his head. Um, have you ever done anything like that in game? No, nah, I don't think I have. Nah. Anything of the sort, even a kick over your head at all? <laughs> no, nah, I reckon I should start trying something like that though. It seems too effective. The game was in Cairns, it was wet, it was an ugly day. As a fan watching it, were you sort of like, this is a garbage game of footy, I want to turn it off? Or did you like that it was slippery and contested and sort of like a muggy contest? Uh, well, the first quarter I was like, oh, this is going to get smashed here, six goals down. You weren't the only one thinking that? Yeah, and then after that I was just like, oh, wow, this has turned into a good game, so I kept watching. Don't mind that. And um, Filthy, pretty crafty for a big fella. Um, anything you've learnt from him in the first couple of, probably three or four months you've been at the club now? I reckon just his work ethic, like he's very, he works hard and he's always in the gym doing extras and always doing extra touch. And yeah, he puts himself to the sword a bit, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, too good mate, thank you for joining us. Too easy, thanks you. Every time you attend an Adelaide Crows home game, you could score a free Whopper from Hungry Jacks. Simply download the Hungry Jacks app for your chance to win. Now, the coach's box is a long way from the action, so how do their messages get to the players? We'll examine that shortly. Welcome back. Matthew Nix and his assistants prefer the elevated view of games from the coach's box. That means, of course, there's some distance from the field of play. With the help of Dr Jones and partners, let's get a clearer picture of how they communicate with the bench and the players. The role of the bench coach is basically to communicate with the senior coach and communicate that through to the playing group. So it's a two-way conversation. Obviously there's a lot of things that I get information from the players and, the, and what the feel is on the ground level. Then that goes back up to Nixie and then that's discussed and then vice versa whenever something needs to happen, whether it's structural or whether they need to talk to a player, then I feed that information down. So the details that get communicated to the players could be structural, could be that we want to move certain players to different positions, or it could be a learning moment where we get vision sent down to us from the box and I might sit with the player and go through something that the coaches are seeing upstairs and show them what they can do and improve on the next time. It's very intense. I think the most difficult thing to do is to make sure that everyone stays calm on the bench because that's where the emotion is. We have to think clearly, so it's really important to, to maintain you know, some calmness down there. So yeah, they get quite stressed. I'm normally pretty calm. When things get heated, it's, it's a matter of normally allowing the coaches to vent. I have to decipher through what's important and what's not at that time. You know, Nixie, he vents, he needs to vent, that's important for his thought process, but then he calms really quickly, and then we get onto the process of what needs to happen so yeah it's 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 an interesting phone line at times someone who has no trouble talking is big sam jacobs and he co-hosts the crows radio show with tomo every sunday morning at nine on triple m this year the adelaide crows are asking you to silence the siren head to tickertech.com.au to secure your seats and cheer the team as loud as you can with climate change awareness on the rise, the Crow's major sponsor, Toyota, is committed to working towards a zero emission society. Toyota has designed and produced the Toyota Mirai, one of the world's first hydrogen fuel cell powered vehicles. So what exactly is a hydrogen car? We asked two Crow's players to investigate. Hi guys, I'm Ned McHenry and I'm with Fish McCasey and today we're going to test drive the new Toyota Mirai. Fish, what do you know about hydrogen powered cars? Oh, next to nothing mate and I'm sure that's the same for you, but that's about to change. We're going to do a little true or false segment on hydrogen powered cars. Mm -hmm. 
Fish here, kick us off with the first question, mate. No worries, mate. So, true or false, you can charge hydrogen cars at an electric vehicle charging station. Ooh, I'm gonna say false on that one, Fish. I, I don't think you can. Correct, it is false. There's no need to charge the Toyota Mirai. The car creates electricity by combining hydrogen and oxygen in the fuel cell system. I've got a question for you, Fish. The large grille at the front of the Toyota Mirai is designed to make the car aerodynamic. I'm gonna say true on that one. Oh, mate, unfortunately it's false. Um, obviously a good guess there, but the grill allows for abundant oxygen intake to help power the car's fuel cell system. All right, question three here. Hydrogen cars use batteries, true or false? I'm gonna say true. It is true, I would have said false on that one. The battery in the Toyota Mirai supplies extra power and stores energy as well. What about this one, Fish? You need to fill up the tank of a hydrogen car more often than a petrol vehicle. True. Oh, mate, close, it's false. The Toyota Mirai has a driving distance of up to 650 kilometers, uh, which is further than some petrol vehicles, so no need to uh, be filling up too often. True or false, the hydrogen car emits water vapor. True. Yes, it is true. It's not a trick question, it is, is it? It is true, yes, no. The Toyota Mirai is zero emissions vehicle, so it emits nothing more than water vapor, and they say you can even drink it. Right, final question for you, Fish. The word Mirai means future. True. Mate, correct. Yes. The Got Toyota one. Mirai is an example of Toyota's commitment to create a more environmental environmentally conscious and sustainable future, hence the name. Nice mate, Amazing. good, we got through a bit of info there. Yeah, we sure did. In the early 2000s, Central District was unstoppable and two players epitomised that success. We'll meet them after the break. Most players only ever dream of a premiership. Chris and James Gowans each chalked up nine of them with Central District in the sandful. The twins were dominant players from the moment they arrived at the club from St Kilda in 2000. 12 years later, they retired with nearly 500 games between them. Thanks to Bendigo Bank, let's see what they're up to now. Premierships in 11 years. I got drafted to St Kilda in 99 and we both got offered to go back on the rookie list at the end of that year and it wasn't a lot of money back then so we decided to come to South Australia, we just didn't know which club. We knew a guy from St Kilda who played at Central Districts and um, yeah we followed him over for one year to try and get back into the AFL system and um, yeah the rest is history, we never got drafted and we won and played in a few premierships. over we won the first flag or played in the first premiership side which was good as well and just to turn that uh, into what nine flags in 12 years was was pretty special mine was 2000 the yeah. first one for us we lo actually lost five um, grand finals before we'd come over that was our sixth one on the trot that we'd played in and we'd lost all five so that one is definitely the most special for us first for the club first for us yeah 2000 for me definitely the favorite even the party out at the ponderosa after the game you know it was 25 30,000 people out there and um yeah celebrations went on for weeks it was amazing yeah look we were really lucky to be part of a special group back in the uh, the time we played at Centrals, um, we probably stood out a bit more because we're twins and we're lucky to get you know, inducted in the Hall of Fame. It's a huge honour. We, we, we didn't really play for individual honours, it was always for the team. Yeah, someone's got to go in, it may as well be us, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Two great fellas, but boy, were they tough. Okay, now's the time to find our crow in the crowd. Whenever you attend a home game and post a photo of yourself or a friend on social media, make sure you use the hashtag WeFlyers1. We're getting so many photos and today's winner is you. Please email facingthecrowd at afc.com.au with photo ID to claim your prize of two tickets to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill at Adelaide Oval. Now, each week, we give a fan the opportunity to question the coach. And today, Declan of Adelaide wants to know what Matthew Nix regards as his best win. 
Maybe it's his first as coach or the recent showdown victory. Thanks for the question, Declan. Look, from a personal point of view, I thought the best win I've been involved with was the showdown. I think when Dawson's kick went through after the siren, I think there's no there's no better feeling than than that. I think for the whole stadium, there was um, it was an incredible night, you know, massive day for our footy club. That's about all we have time for on the Crows Show. Keep up to date with all the latest news on at the Crows Show. And remember, the club's social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for your company today and together with Belinda Sloan, I look forward to joining you again next weekend on 7. Bye for now. This program was proudly brought to you by the new Pork Belly Deluxe Burger. Only at Hungry Jack's.